स्वभावचिन्मयानंदम कृपा पूर्णम जगतपति हरिषड वर्गजे तारम सदा शिव सारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा I welcome you all with my love and respects. From today, before entering into the sutras, I'll answer your questions related to yesterday's discourse or any other related subject. You can put your questions in writing when you leave the discourse hall. And same way, people who are watching through internet can send your questions through email. So, we'll enter into the session. I welcome you all with my love and respects. Let me read out today's sutras. Today's sutra and enter into the session look lovingly at some object do not go to another object here in the middle of the object let the blessing descend on you human body is created specially to achieve four major things in the life dharma artha kama moksha dharma means the routine the flow in which it does not get tired or it does not fall sick that is dharma second artha comforts and luxury third kama pleasure and excitement fourth important thing moksha a beautiful inner space body is created to experience the best things in the outer world and the best things in the inner world your eyes are created to look outside and to look inside there is a beautiful description in the tradition about this kundalini's awakening how to know whether our higher consciousness is awakened or not how to know whether we have started evolving in the spiritual life or not they say a very beautiful taste you will start feeling continuously inside the throat the experience of the amrita will start happening and a beautiful clear serene visions will start happening inside whenever you start looking inside you look beyond fear and greed whenever you start looking outside you look through fear and greed world is given life by your vision same way the experience of the divine also given life by turning your vision inside jagat or ishwara if your vision is towards outside jagat comes to life if your vision is towards inside ishwara comes to life jiva is the point from which you can decide 
whether to look at the Jagat or to look at the Ishwara. In the Vedic tradition, these three concepts are basic concepts. Jiva, Ishwara, Jagat. Jiva means the individual self. If the individual self is operating externally, if it is functioning towards the outer world, towards the outside, it sees, ish, it sees the Jagat, means world. If it is going inside, if it is turning in, it sees Ishwara, Divine. That is the reason the psychological revolution is a basic necessity for spiritual life. Clarity on Jiva, individual self, Ishwara, God, the Jagat, world. Clarity about all these three is what we call psychological revolution. Having a clear, true vision about these three is a basic need for any growth, any achievement. Even the people who achieved something in the external world, they have some clarity about the world, about the Jagat. That is why they are able to achieve. They are able to have much more than what others afford to have, what others are able to have. Shiva gives a very beautiful technique. To use the senses which are by its own nature going out, by its own nature senses are outgoing. Senses look at the Jagat. Shiva is very beautifully giving us a technique to turn the whole thing in, to see the God, Ishwara, to experience the Divine. Look lovingly at some object. Do not go to another object. Here in the middle of the object, the blessing. Just yesterday, one of my ashram it was asking me, Swamiji, in one of your discourses you said, we don't worship idols, we worship through idols. But suddenly day for yesterday's discourse, the first day Shiva Sutra, you said, Deity is God. Deity does not represent God. Is it not contradicting? Seemingly contradicting. Understand? Seemingly contradicting. Understand the first statement? We don't worship the idol. We worship through the idol. Second statement. Deity does not represent God. Deity is God. Worship through idol happens only when you feel Deity is God. Not when you feel Deity represents God. When you think Deity represents God, even then there is a gap between you and the Divine. You have some idea. Only half of your energy will pay attention and devotion to this object which is in front of you. See, basically, you cannot conceive the idea of God or divine as long as your mind is functioning in the physical frequency. As long as the body and mind is functioning in the physical frequency, naturally you cannot conceive, you cannot understand something which is beyond your frequency. In the dream state, you cannot conceive a life or consciousness in the waking state exists. You cannot remember, you cannot understand anything about waking state in the dream state. Whatever idea you may have about your waking state, in the dream state, is only idea, not the reality. Not the reality. In the same way, in the waking state, 
you cannot have any idea about the superconscious state, about the divine. So naturally you need to have something which you can connect or relate when you really disappear into that. Only then you experience the higher conscious state. It's like a strong nightmare. How it wakes you up, how it brings you out of the dreaming state. See, the, your whole inner space, when you are dreaming, your whole inner space should be shaken by any one object. Only then, you will come out of the dream. For example, you are dreaming as if a lion is chasing you or an elephant is chasing you. And the dream itself, you have an idea. I think in the form of elephant, some my own desires or fear is chasing me. You won't get up. Surely, you will not wake up. Only if you are sure, yes, elephant is chasing me. Lion is chasing me. You will wake up. You will be awakened. You will come to the higher state. To the waking state. Same way, during the worship, only if you feel deity is God, not, oh, I know about God, that energy is represented by this deity. No. Then again, your ego, what you know about God, only you are worshipping, not the God itself. Worship means where you need to lose your ideas. You need to lose your ideas about the divine. Only then the divine will start expressing itself. That is why deity is God. Do not think deity represents God. Only when you understand deity is God, worship through the idol happens. Till then you will be doing only idol worship. There is a very beautiful sutra. Of course, this is also given by Mahadeva to Rishi, to another one disciple. It's a Tamil verse. Let me repeat that and I'll translate. Marathil maraindadu mamada yane, marathai maraitadu mamada yane, Parathil maraindadu parmudal bhoodam, parathai maraitadu parmudal bhoodam. Let me literally translate, then we will understand this sutra. There was a beautiful statue of elephant carved in teakwood. When you see the elephant, the idea of wood disappears. When you see the wooden statue, the idea of elephant disappears. When you see externally, the world hides the God. When you see internally, God hides the world. Very beautiful description. Understand, you can never have an idea, wooden statue and elephant at the same moment. Fortunately, you can have only one thought at a time. You are blessed. One thought at a time. That is why liberation is possible. That is why liberation is possible. Actually, as you think, you do not have a huge army of enemy in front of you. Enemies in front of you. You have only one enemy at any point. At any point, at any time, you have only one enemy. You do not have army of Enemies in front of you. We don't understand that. Either this moment you will see that as an elephant or wooden statue. The mo next moment you may see in the other way. But not both ideas in the same moment. Same way, either you see the world or the God. When you see the whole thing as divine, Suddenly the world disappears. Parattai maraitadu parmudal bhudam. All the five elements as hidden, it has covered the divine. 
Paratil Marindadu Paramudal Budam. When you have the intense vision to look deeply, all the five elements disappears into the divine. If you see the deity, you cannot see the statue. If you see God, you can't see statue. If you see statue, you cannot see God. You can see only any one thing. Only when you see the deity as God, you will lose yourself. Worship through the idol will start happening. Worship through the idol will start happening when you lose yourself into the deity. When you know for sure the deity is alive. I have so many wonderful stories. The moment I remember the power of this deity, experiencing deity as God, I remember so many stories. One story from my own personal experience. Of course, I would have told this story many times, but it's okay, I love to tell this story. <laughs> it is such a wonderful story. I was traveling in Gujarat. I always remember that elderly lady and respect her. Like how I remembered yesterday, Swami Lakshman Ju, I can say this lady is surely lives in the, lived in the same consciousness of Gopikas or the Krishna's Angadevatas, the Krishna's divine companions. Fortunately, I had the opportunity to see this lady. I used to go from village to village. I'll walk easily. I was able to walk 60 kilometer per day. Morning, I'll start. And after all, healthy young man, what is there? Just 60 kilometer. By evening, about the sunset time, I'll decide where to stay. In the nearest village, I'll decide to stay. Then after a few days, if I feel like starting, again I'll start. Gujarat is land of God. It is a, I was always told that a calling God is local call in Kerala. In Gujarat is an intercom. <laughs> Not even local call. It is an intercom. Now it is the land of divine. So still, still Bharat is alive in Gujarat. I always feel as long as Gujarat is alive, Bharat will be alive. I always bless. I remember Gujarat and bless. Always. Understand? Feeding sadhus is such a wonderful thing. Even if you feed 2000 useless guys and one enlightened sadhu, it is worthy. Because that sadhus, good feeling will save the whole place. It will just save the whole place. As long as Gujarat is alive, the Bharat Dharma will never die. It will be alive. It will be kept alive. I can say for sure, not even once in my wandering days in Gujarat, I had any little struggle for any need or or I need to ask anybody to be taken care. That is the greatness of the Bharat culture. Today we had Maheshwar Puja giving food to the sadhus and the tradition is alive with respect in Gujarat. You see, there are many other places. They may give food, but they may make that person stand in queue and give like... But in Gujarat I have never seen Unless they give food to the sadhus, they will not eat. They will not give after they eat. If they have eaten, they will cook fresh food and give. Or they will give the material to cook for himself to eat. Sadhus are never treated as beggars. Such a wonderful place. 
it is actually that culture still keeps many enlightened masters again and again happening because somebody who wants to do research in the inner science cannot afford to take up a regular job you need to give him some time some energy to do the research and go through all the confusions of ups and downs see the worst depression and the peak joy both of them have happened in me at least few thousand times only then the mind breaks mind unclutches and enters into enlightenment understand the peak and valley should happen few thousand times in the system only then system gets bored of the mind the nagging mind and diverses till then no 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 i think it's okay i can manage for few days only today because maybe because i was having headache <laughs> my mind is not cooperating with me but only when the system sees the peaks and valleys it just decides enough enough let's drop so you, you you cannot afford to take up any regular job in which he needs to follow a regular routine like a morning getting up going and attending an office attending uh, same thing and consistently doing something and again lying down in the same bed same house same life he cannot afford the person who lives in a normal life will be very normal nothing extraordinary can <laughs> happen because his whole consciousness is continuously just continuously can cut just like a bonsai trees roots are continuously cut the person who lives in a regular safe routine person who lives in a routine which he knows will never be able to grow roots or wings understand it's a very solid statement i am making i know it may be hurting you but i am telling you the truth narada parivraja upanishad a very beautiful upanishad describes the way of the paramamsa or achieving the ultimate experience if you know your routine when you get up from the bed if you know if you have a rough idea about your routine till the night till you come back to the bed be very clear your life will be normal it is like a cutting your roots like bonsai banyan tree how the bonsai banyan tree's roots are cut continuously and it can it can never take the roots same way that person can never expand beyond certain limit worst depression and the ultimate joy both should happen in your system again and again at least few thousand times only then you decide enough this mind enough i played with this mind now let me relax in a conscious state you decide very clearly that happens only at that moment only when you relax like that gujarat is the place where they feel and understand that sadhus need to be given their time to do the inner research and development but once they achieve the success it is just like a funding the medical researchers once the success is achieved who is going to be the benefiter who is going to be benefited the whole world the whole world is going to be benefited the other day in cn there was a discussion why the medicines are costly in usa and cheap in canada because usa is spending for research and development so much money is spent in research so naturally here they have to make the cover the money take that money back naturally after you do research and development and open it it's useful to the whole world same way the gujarat is the place they do research and development but never take the money back and give it to the whole world that's a beautiful i can say at least 40000 monasteries are constantly giving food to sadhus in gujarat 
40,000 monasteries. I went through the statistics. I was traveling in a, in a small village. I was going from Gandhinagar to the Somnath. That time only they were constructing the Akshardham temple. Constructing are almost completed. The first Akshardham, Bhagavan Swaminarayan's Akshardham, went and had darshan, then walked, wanted to go to Somnath, one of the Jyotirlinga. In between, one village. One elderly lady, she invited me, Baba, come and stay in my house. It was a small hut. She was having a, one cow and a small patch of land in front of her hut. She'll grow something for her to eat, some uh, greens and whatever little bit things needed for cooking. And this cow milk she will go and sell in the market. And with that she will, she will bring some food and offer it to Krishna and she will also eat. She had a small Krishna. She is a great Krishna devotee. Had a small Krishna deity. And she will offer to Krishna and eat. This is a simple life. I can say her whole total property value will be less than thousand dollar. Her per day income may be maximum two dollar. Two dollar is per day income and whole wealth, worth of the wealth is thousand dollar. That's all is her life. And But living very quiet, contented life, I stayed with her some maybe week. I forgot the days because all I know is sunrise and sunset. That's all. No question of watch, no question of calendar. <laughs> Nothing needs to be used. All I know is sunset and sunrise and sunset. I will know the Amavasya and Purnima from the seeing the moon. Wonderful life. It's a life to be lived without remembering even the years. One week I stayed with her. Every night she will bring the food and keep, keep it in front of that uh, Krishna and he'll, she will start talking. That is one thing. And I'll, I can neither contain my laughter nor I can laugh because I will hurt her and she is giving after all food for me. <laughs> I have to be a little polite. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> but she will sit and she will talk as if she is talking to somebody. She will sit casually and have a small fan. The hand fan, she will fan that Krishna deity and she will tell, alright, please eat. She will tell so many things in Gujarati. I don't understand so much. But I can understand few words because many Sanskrit words are there in Gujarati. So, because Sanskrit words are there, few words I can catch. She will be going on talking, maybe for half an hour or one hour. Then she will eat that food and lie down, give me also little food. And after one week I said, alright, ma, uh, ma, I am leaving, I am continuing my journey. She started crying. No, 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 why do you want to go? I will not ask you to work and all, to stay here. I <laughs> will give you food. And... Where do you want it to go? All those usual things. I said, no, no, I am a sadhu. I have to continue my journey. Sadhus are not supposed to stay more than three days or four days in any place. Traditionally. Because the, till the enlightenment, they should not stay because the attachment may start growing. And their continuous sadhana may stop. They may not start doing their spiritual practices. So, till enlightenment happens, they cannot settle down in one place. I said, no, no, I'll continue. I have to go and have darshan of Somanath and continue my spiritual journey. She ran to the Krishna and she started telling, oh, tell him not to go. I'm so happy that he was here. You only should tell him that not to go. And she started speaking. Then within few seconds, the very funny thing, she stopped talking and wiped her tears and said, Oh, you are telling he has to go. He is a sadhu, he has to go. Okay, okay. If you are telling the okay, then I will I'll not worry. I will not cry. She consoled herself as if Krishna is talking back. This is too much. <laughs> All these days, 
she was talking to Krishna, okay, I can put up with that. Anyhow, devotee, she has some love for it. Anyhow, she is doing whatever she wants. And after all, she is giving me food, I have to keep quiet. And it's okay. And Krishna talking back, or she acting as, as if Krishna talking back is too much. To tell you honestly, I did not have respect for deity worship or the puja or this, all this ritualistic worship before enlightenment. There was a period I had the respect, very young age, when I was too innocent, like till the age of 10. After the age of 10 only, I started studying this Vedanta. Having the knowledge of Vedanta without the experience of Vedanta is the worst thing can happen to human being. <laughs> no, really I am telling you. Knowledge of Vedanta but without the experience of Vedanta. Because it gives you almost the pseudo feeling you have everything, you know everything. You are the greatest person in the world. And practically... You will not have any respect for anybody, not only to traditions, anybody. You will be such an idiot. You will not know that. That is the problem. If you know you are an idiot, at least you can save your face. You will not know, but everybody will know. <laughs> that is the worst thing can happen to human beings. Anyhow, I was in that mood. I had the knowledge, but not the experience. Experience has not happened. But the knowledge was there. So naturally, the Vedantic knowledge without experience adds so much of arrogance and intellect to you. I can say, your whole inner space kind of gets corrupted. To... If you are feeling hurt, sorry, but I am telling you exact truth. I have seen hundreds of monasteries where people sit and study this Vedanta for 20 years. I really feel sorry for them. If they can spend the time in sadhana, it will be so much fruitful. Actually, half an hour studying and 10 hours digesting that, means doing contemplation or sadhana, will be the perfect, the balancing. That will be the perfect thing. But in some monasteries, studying is very juicy. Understand? You know more and more words. You can play with more and more words and you can show to others. And it brings respect. That's another one problem. Why people respect you don't know. Actually, they are afraid of listening to you. you say, they say, no, you all right, whatever you say is right, please just sit, close your eyes, don't open your mouth, we will do puja to you. <laughs> we will do whatever you say. We will respect you, worship you, but just do not open your mouth. <laughs> but this guy thinks he has respect because of his knowledge. What to do? Having the knowledge without having the experience is the worst state. You will not respect anybody. You will not respect anything. You will be so dry within you and without the inside and outside. I have seen in my experience how to find out whether somebody is a strong Vedanti, you know, he will have stomach problem. Really. See, logic is like having teeth in the stomach. You will literally eat you. Having teeth inside the stomach. Constantly you will be chewing yourself. You will carry constant irritation. Compassion or love is like a lubricating you. Now, intellect, just intellect is like a continuously turning your nerves. And creating more and more stress. You will have stomach problem. Giving your love. Even a hug or just looking at something with a love is like sending with a high force lubrication into your nervous system. It just heals. Even for a few seconds, look at any one of those deities. 
we have so many deity you may feel connected or you may have love for any one deity based on your family bringing up or based on the maybe some books you read or some your prayers got fulfilled you might have prayed to shiva and it got fulfilled or you might have prayed to the krishna and got fulfilled or you might have prayed to the ganapati and got fulfilled or you might have from the very young age you might have heard about vishnu more and you may be feeling connected any one deity just sit there for 2 3 minute look at the deity with a very deep love you will see your whole system will be lubricated it's as if like a amrita the nectar is spreading through your whole system sit and read some dry books strong intellectual book it is like as if your nerves are being turned or churned or the stress getting created inside your nerves i was a kind of a such a sharp intellect logic never had respect till the age of from the age of 10 to till enlightenment i did not have respect for all these things where heart needs to be used because all my energy and time was spent in intellect the knowledge did not give so much respect for the necessity of developing the heart anyhow when i heard that she talking back about me going the krishna says no 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 it's okay don't bother she is telling oh it's okay oh you are telling that he should go i should be consoling myself all right all right that was little too much i, I went near her and said with my broken hindi and sanskrit that time i used to use more words because there is no gap now i forgot many of the hindi words stopped using i told mata mata ji you are praying to krishna that is okay but what you are talking as if he is talking back to you this all illusion you should come out of it <laughs> no actually that is the <laughs> that is the way I, because see traditionally sadhus are respected more even we are addressed as baba baba means father so all grihis are like one step lower householders are like one step lower they are not respected in the vedantic tradition much so i had that same i am a sadhu so i told uh, this are all illusion you should come out of it you should eat healthy food and stay healthy <laughs> to come out of all this and she was so innocent she said no no baba i am not lying don't you see he is sitting and she just held my hand i promise i saw krishna there he was sitting there just a simple child i tell you with what intensity you see me now i promise at least deeper intensity than that i have seen krishna there he was there just small baby as he was described in bhagavata with a small flute in the hand and putting his hand like this in the on the face very innocently with a peacock feather all the uncleaned hair and very dirty mouth all that food was there on the mouth and unwiped and just that, that small little baby he was there the shock was from the very root center understand the shock was from the very muladhara chakra that from the root my being was shaken it is a you can understand i was see even if i had the small doubt she is a saintly lady i wouldn't have went and told her you should come out of all this illusion and you should stop doing all this foolishness you should be very healthy i would i would have never told that such a simple unassuming no 
external expressions of any saint or a divine being in her. A simple lady, village lady, maybe 70 or 80. Just by touch, she can give initiation. Understand, this is initiation. This is not just... She was able to transmit that experience into my system. It is not that when she held her hand, I was convinced Shiva, Krishna is there. No, I saw clearly he was there. The shaking or shock was so much, it just fell at her feet. I can remember very clearly, after falling at the feet of the Kuppamal, my first inspiration and great teacher, her name is Vibhudananda Devi, the spiritual name, Vibhuda, Swami Mata Vibhudananda Puri Devi, after falling at her feet, with that same reverence and respect, Second person whom I fell at, fell at the feet means only this lady. This lady only received my respect and reverence equivalent to the Kuppamal. I just fell at, her and fe fell at her feet and said, never ever call me as Baba. You are my Mata. Because as long as she was holding my hand, Krishna was there. I saw. The moment she took her hand out, it disappeared. I was again same old intellectual. It was a very deep, strong experience. The same respect which I had for my own teacher started having. After that, I never ever had doubt or disrespect about this Murti Puja or this worshipping the deity. Even if I go to somebody's house, I will go to the Puja room first and do the Namaskar. Sometime my own photo also will be there. Even then, I will not bother. First thing I will do, show the camphor and do Namaskar. You do not know in whose house who is staying. In whose house who is residing. You do not know. Never. Take deities for granted. We take deities for granted because it is available for sale. Never ever take deities for granted. When I fell at her feet, she was not able to understand. She said, Baba, Baba, Baba what are you doing? Actually, she stopped me and uh, falling at her feet and she was so respectful. Afterwards, I had small little chat with her before leaving. She was so innocent, she was thinking, even if she is living with Krishna, then such a small person like her can have darshan of divine and living with Krishna. She was thinking that all sadhus would have had vision and darshan and they are living divine life. I said, that shows your innocence. I know how many people are meditating for years to have the glimpse of the Lord. And here is a lady, she is living, living with him from morning till night. I have seen, she will lock the, that small hut and go for that selling the milk. There is nothing inside the hut to steal. Even if some thief comes, they will drop something out of love and... The <laughs> <laughs> compassion <laughs> and <laughs> drop something inside and go back. <laughs> there is nothing except two, three bricks for head and two, three gunny bag for lying down. But she will lock that room carefully and go. And I will ask her, why are you locking? No, no, no. If some dog comes and hurts Krishna, what to do? <laughs> if Krishna, slowly, if he goes out and he gets hurt in the road, what to do? Such a deep feeling connected. I can see in her eyes how she sees the Krishna. How she looks at the Krishna. How the very vision is so beautiful. So clean. 
I never miss a chance to tell this story. Unfortunately, I tried my best. I was never able to get her photograph. After enlightenment, after the organization was created, I personally, specially sent people, tried to trace. We were able to locate that place, but she passed away. She was no more and, and we were never able to get her photograph. I wanted to get her photograph and put in all our temples as the ideal of Murti Puja. Person who lived with God through the deity worship. I wanted all our temples to have our photograph so that people will remember how an innocent village lady lived such a divine life of living with God. But unfortunately, we were not able to get photo Because in India, the village's photography and all is unknown. It's not, never even heard. At least in 10 years ago and all. Anyhow, at least we can remember her and offer our respects.